I'm five months into my journey as a full-time indie game developer again, and I think I'm finally starting to hit my stride, which feels weird to admit to you because five months is a long amount of time. And I even gave my company a one month notice back in February. So I'd have a whole month to kind of gear up my skills and, and reacquaint myself with what a solo development lifestyle could be again. Cause a reminder, I did this back in 2022, kind of accidentally that time, but this time around, it was going to be a completely new adventure because I have already released a commercial game. So I was going to come in with more experience, more understanding and more of a strategy of what I wanted to do, but that didn't happen. I, I kicked off uh, my time back in March, kind of working on this mining and crafting game. And part of the challenge of this is the idea was like three notches too big for what I can currently execute as a solo indie game developer. But the other part of it is just that starting a new job. And that's what I'm doing right now. This is a new job takes time to become comfortable with. You have to onboard yourself. You have to figure out what are the normal meeting cadences and stuff like that. What is the what is the emotions like? What are the difficult parts of the job? What are the parts of the job that you like well? And if I think back to my software engineering career, it takes me about six months to be comfortable with the job I'm doing. So part of that hitting the stride is just getting used to what the new cadence of life is like for me. But part of that is also me figuring out what do I want to be like as an indie game development studio? And I think the biggest thing for me is leaning into the solo aspects of that adventure. Because although you can make really cool games like Slay the Spire or Terraria or Stardew Valley, as you start to like scale up a team, I know some of those examples have solo developers at the core, but eventually expanded to have more people on the team to help out with various things. As a solo developer, you can start to pivot. You can... You can take all of your understanding of the project you're working on and in a moment you could pivot you could have an idea because you're the designer the developer the qa heck you're the unpaid intern and because i'm all those things if i have an idea for a game i can quickly gut check myself to see do i currently know how to do that what systems in that tweets worth of an idea can i execute and what things might be an insane amount of time to execute execute because everybody can have a, an interesting idea for a game. Off the top of my head, um, a cool one could be like a roguelike bakery, like an indie roguelike bakery where you have to hire some staff who can help um, help you start a bakery and maybe start in a garage and then eventually you buy a storefront and you expand to a second storefront and you go to farmer's markets and all these different things to sell your goods. And that's a quick little idea to give you, but there's a lot of depth in some of those systems that could take you years to implement. And because of that, I'm going to shy away from that idea. I don't have years to implement. I've only self-funded myself for about the next year. So I need to come up with ideas that I can execute on in a short amount of time. And right there, that is one of the strengths as a solo developer is because you know your development, you know, you know your skills as a developer. If you're completely honest with yourself, you know your strengths and weaknesses. And so if you have an idea for something and you're thinking about implementing and you're like, I don't really know how I do that or... That seems interesting, but because I did a prototype about a game like this in the past, I know that's going to take me a lot longer to do, or there's just a lot of uncertainty, and uncertainty can turn into a wormhole of bugs and time investment, and so I'm trying to simplify. I pivoted away from this mining and crafting game and instead leaned into a minimalistic village builder where you get to play cards, place hexagon tiles, and command your villagers. I'm calling this game... Hexagon. You can actually go play the demo right now and wishlist the game. It really does help support this channel and me as a developer more than you understand. But that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to simplify my development process. I'm trying to flex my ability and learn my, my process for making really enjoyable gameplay loops. And part of that is scoping a game to be really small. Heck, this is a small tweet's worth of a description. And each of these little systems does have their own complexity. But what I've been able to do here is actually make a system that is relatively simple to teach the player, have just straight up enjoyable gameplay, 
and then I can slowly adjust the scope. Like yesterday, we had a great Twitch stream where we spent about four hours talking about what the end game tweaks in the system could be. In each step of the way, as we were brainstorming, going back and forth with me and chat, I was constantly checking in with my, the development side of my brain and saying, if we do something like that, is that a huge scope creep? Is that gonna cost me weeks, months, days? Is that gonna change this game into a year long project? And because I can do that in a closed loop fashion, that becomes a strength. That becomes something I can constantly check in with myself with and steer the design so that I can design a fun game. And I can then execute that fun vision with a UI UX that is just fun mm -hmm. with clicking around the screen and opening and closing mm -hmm. the shop and moving things around and the juicy sound effects and this nice cloud effect. I can focus in on trying to learn how to execute ideas really well. My goal right now is to get this project out for the October Next Fest, which means I have just under like two and a half months to get this demo into a really good state and then probably another month or two to fully get this game out the door and into Steam. But in that time, you bet your ass, I'm starting to think about the second and third and fourth games that I could start making because ultimately speaking, if I can figure out how to design small little projects like this that don't have infinite replayability, but instead focus on a couple hours where you you learn the game and you just have a just a good time playing the gameplay loop, I think that's a recipe for success. If you look at studios like the Sock Pop Collective and stuff like that, that's what a lot of their small little games end up being, is these games that you play for two to three hours and you finish it, you beat the game, and you're left with, wow, I can't believe that game was only $5. That was super fun. It doesn't have to be this roguelike where you can play it for 500 hours or 100 hours or whatever any crazy roguelikes. I mean, I keep coming back to Slay the Spire and I'm almost... 200 hours in Display the Spire, and I think it was a $20 game, which is insane value for that game. But you can also have insane value for a game like Hexagod and have it be something that you play for a couple hours or you come back to because you had a long day at work and you just want a, a cozy experience of being able to play cards and click and have just like little things go well for you. So I don't know how to wrap this video up other than to tell you that you should go check out Hexagod. You should think about what your strengths are as a developer and start leaning into that. You have a bunch of weaknesses because I have a bunch of weaknesses. So design around that weakness. For example, Hexagod has a minimalistic art style that plays really well with a gameplay loop because you know what? I suck at art. So I'm using really flat shapes flat colors to lean into the minimalistic style that can also be reminiscent of a game that is, inspires this game, which is Stackland. So someone can see this and a bunch of people over in the comments and on the various shorts I've made have said, hey, this looks kind of like Stacklands, which is perfect. That's perfect. That is a huge source of inspiration for this minimalistic play style is Stackland. So as you're looking at your games, as you're looking at your different projects you're going to be putting into, lean into your strengths as a studio. That is what I'm trying to do for myself right now. I don't know if that's gonna work out. Heck, there might be a video five months from now where I talk about a different strategy, but right now it is simplify, simplify, simplify. Don't add in localization, don't add in controller support, don't think about porting to the Switch until I've made a good game that's fun. We joke about this over on the Twitch stream, just make a fun game. The Jest is doing a lot of work there, but I'd love if you'd come stop by the stream, check out Hexagod, but until next time, my name is Aramis. Good luck out there. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.